The Justice Department on Friday files charges against its former chief, Senator Lila de Lima, for allegedly receiving money from drug convicts in exchange for their protection. This comes five months after a sensational House probe initiated by administration allies, where new believed prison convicts were allowed to testify on de Lima's alleged transactions with them. De Lima, President Rodrigo Duterte's fiercest critic, is charged with violating the Dangerous Drugs Act, which penalizes the sale, trading, administration, dispensation, delivery, distribution, and transportation of illegal drugs. She faces 12 years to life imprisonment and fines ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos. De Lima says the case is plain and simple political persecution. She adds she's prepared to be, quote, the first political prisoner under the Duterte administration. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre earlier said the charges will be filed before a regular court instead of the office of the Ombudsman because her involvement in illegal drugs is not related to her current office. De Lima accuses the Duterte administration of concocting charges against her after she led the investigation of the alleged Davao death squad when Duterte was mayor. Duterte is convinced the Justice Department has a solid case against De Lima. He adds, De Lima should just face the music. Senator Antonio Chilianes on Friday tells President Rodrigo Duterte to stick to the issue and make public his bank transaction history. Duterte earlier vowed to resign if Chilianes can prove in court that the president had at least 500 million pesos in his bank accounts. Chilianes on Thursday revived his charges that Duterte had as much as 2.4 billion pesos in his bank accounts not reflected in his statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth when he was mayor. He also released transaction records of bank accounts owned by Duterte, his three adult children, and his common-law wife, Hanilet Avancena, from 2006 to 2015. Chilianes also reminds Duterte he had already filed the plunder complaint against him before the Ombudsman as early as May 2016. Presidential legal counsel Sal Panelo dismisses the documents Chilianes made public on Thursday as fake. Vice President Lenny Robredo calls the possible appointment of former Senator Bongbong Marcos as Interior Secretary as a scary prospect. Robredo says, quote, For me, that is scary in the sense that he will again be given an opportunity to do what they did before. There are reports that President Rodrigo Duterte may appoint Marcos as Interior Secretary after the lapse of the one-year appointment ban on losing candidates. Robredo says that while she respects whatever decision Duterte would make, she has yet to see the Marcos family pay back victims of the martial law. The former center also refuses to acknowledge the abuses of the Marcos regime and repeatedly said during the 2016 campaign that his family had nothing to apologize for. Amnesty International says the killings related to the drug war slowed down but still continued, even after President Rodrigo Duterte ordered the Philippine National Police to stop its war on drugs. Duterte's war on drugs left more than 7,000 dead after a brutal seven-month campaign. The rights group says unknown assailants are now killing between 9 and 10 people daily. This compared with about 30 people being killed every day by police and unknown suspects when the PNP was still leading the war on drugs. But Amnesty says the targets remain the same, people linked to drugs who live in poor neighborhoods. Amnesty, in a report earlier this month, accused the PNP of systemic human rights abuses in the drug war. It says police are being paid by their superiors to kill. A Newsweek report says at least one Western European ally of the United States intercepted communications between U.S. President Donald Trump's advisors and Russian officials. Among those supposedly wiretapped was Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's special envoy to Washington, Jose Antonio. He's also known as Trump's business partner in the Philippines. The Newsweek report says the communications took place before Trump's inauguration on January 20. It was part of intelligence operations against the U.S. for the last seven months. Antonio chairs Century Properties, the developer of the 50-story Trump Tower in Makati City. Donald Trump Jr., the U.S. president's son, visited the Philippines in 2014 to help Century Properties break ground on the $150 million property. Antonio was introduced to Ivanka Trump, who introduced him to her father. Trump agreed to license his trade and family name to Century. Newsweek adds a European intelligence service obtained the contracts and legal documents between Trump and Antonio. The deal supposedly resulted in large payments to Trump's business, with millions of dollars more on the way, all coming from the Philippine president's appointee. 
Newsweek says the financial relationship between Trump and the Duterte administration comes as the Philippine-U.S. alliance is under great stress. Duterte has repeatedly vowed to move away from the U.S. and closer to China. Mm-hmm.